Today, you'll learn six different ways to resize or scale plugins within FL Studio. Plugins that are too big and clunky can be so big that options are cut off or off the screen, while plugins that are too small can be hard to read or use or deal with. So let's fix it. Please smash that like button and subscribe. So number one option, first go to personally is going to be resolution. If you can't or don't want to resize your resolution, then I have other options for you. But the smaller your resolution, the bigger the plugins, the bigger the resolution, the smaller the plugins. So to change your resolution, if you're in Windows, you're going to right click your desktop, display settings. And in here, you can change your display resolution, scale and layout of your apps and other items. So if I was to move this downwards, then the plugins that I have open will actually get bigger. Holy crap. <laughs> and as you can see, this is uh, pretty stinking huge. Now, if you don't want to change your resolution, we've got a couple other options here. If I open my plugin here, I'm going to have an option for DPI aware when bridged. This says it's for plugins that appear too big or too small. However, if your plugin is too big or too small, you'll actually want this off. DPI aware when bridged is actually a calibration setting for when you're bridging your plugins. Uh, DPI is dots per inch. And so if the FL Studio calibration for the size of your plugin isn't correct and isn't right, then keeping this on is not going to help you. You want it off because we don't want FL Studio to tell our plugin what size to be. So now that that's off, we can go to processing and we will make bridged. What make bridged does is it opens the plugin as its own Windows or its own uh, Mac, if Macintosh has this option, program. And I guess it wouldn't be a Windows or a Mac program, it would be a program within Windows or Mac. But make bridged opens it as its own standalone program. And this is important because as a standalone program, it's going to have different sizing. It's going to have the sizing from the plugin manufacturer rather than sizing from FL Studio. So we can click this. Now our plugin is still the same size because it's contained within an FL Studio wrapper, which is sized by FL Studio. So we'll also want to go and hit external window. Now, when we open it, you'll see that this one is a lot bigger. It's no longer confined to FL Studio sizing settings. It opens how it wants to open. Some plugins will open bigger, while some plugins will open smaller. So you can try Bridge to see if it works. Problem. Now, because this is its own standalone program, it can actually steal focus from FL Studio. And what does this mean? Well, stealing focus means that it can actually take the audio driver from FL Studio and close FL Studio out of the audio driver when it's in focus, among other potential issues. Depending on the plugin, you might have MIDI problems, other stuff like that. So this is just something to be aware of when doing this. If you want to fix the audio issue, though, we go Options, Audio Settings. We have Auto Close up here in the top right. If you read in the top left, it says free audio device for other applications. You want to make sure that auto close is off because we don't want FL Studio to free up the audio driver for it to be taken by another application when using bridged plugins, at least. If this was on, then anytime FL Studio is not the main focus, your driver is free for other stuff like browsing YouTube, random stuff like that. If your driver is multi-channel though, then this shouldn't be much of an issue because it can handle multiple channels. FL Studio, YouTube, the bridge plugin, you know, so on and so forth. But if you need it, the option's there. I showed you. Don't say I didn't ever do nothing for you. <laughs> now, besides bridging, there is a, another option that is similar that we can try. So if I unbridge this, we actually have a drop down where we can click 
detached. And detaching a plugin will let it travel outside the confines of FL Studio. You could use this to drag it over to a second page, whatever have you. Now, I've heard that this can help. However, it still lives within a fruity wrapper. I'm not entirely sure, but if you're having the issues, why not try everything you can? Something to note about bridging plugins that might be the same for detaching, I'm unsure, is it can make plugins more unstable and can be more likely to cause crashes. However, on the flip side, if your plugins are crashing a lot or it's causing those crashes, when it's bridged and potentially when it's detached, it's actually less likely for that plugin to take FL Studio down with it because it's crashing outside of FL Studio as its own program rather than inside FL Studio. Cool fun fact. So if resolution number one doesn't work, bridging number two doesn't work, and detaching number three doesn't work, we can try number four, which is our GUI settings within FL Studio. Changing these graphics user interface sizes in your general settings in FL Studio will scale plugins, but it's also going to scale everything else within FL Studio. So you can do that here. We've got our main GUI scaling where you can choose any of these and that will change the size in your FL Studio. Our pop-ups and toolbars, you can change these to be their own. If you have to move this main GUI up a bunch, you can try and keep these smaller, at least the things that you can control, because at main, they're going to be based off of, well, our main GUI scaling. So these are ultimately based off this. And this right now is based off our system, but can be changed to whatever else. Now, I've noticed that it's easier to get bigger sizes, it seems like, when scaling here, rather than smaller sizes. Something to note, because I've seen some people talk about this over here, changing the scaling of stuff in the system. That is not what this does. This here, your pixel density, is for if you have like a touch screen or like you're using a stylus, things like that. That's actually calibration settings for touch type devices. So I would leave that alone. Option number five, native scaling and cut off plugins. If your plugin in this wrapper is cut off by the wrapper itself, we have an option in here for scale editor dimensions. And this will create the space to allow for the plugin to be bigger. And vice versa to that, you might be able to scale a plugin to become smaller. To do this, you would dig through your plugin settings. For example, if I come to my Waves C6, I have a drop down here where I can actually change the graphics user interface size and scale. And this is something that's available on all Waves plugins. Other plugins, it might be a bit harder to find, and some plugins don't have these options at all. Something to note, some plugins are going to require you to have the plugin bridged enabled to actually change these graphics user interface scales and settings. So if you find the option and it's not working, go back to the back of your plugin and go make it bridged and do all of that stuff that we talked about before in the bridged section. And the sixth and final option I know of for trying to scale the stuff within FL Studio is actually an FL Studio executable provided by ImageLine that is in the same folder as your FL Studio executable. So in order to get there, we'll open our file explorer, we'll go to our PC, C drive, program files, we will scroll down to image line, your version of FL Studio. And in here, you'll see we have FL Scaled or FL64 Scaled. FL Scaled is the 32-bit version of the application, while FL64 is the 64-bit version of the application. Open the one that fits with your version of Windows. 
in order to check what your version of Windows is, you can actually scroll your wheel in here till you see this PC. And then you can right click this PC and click properties. And in there, you will see info for your operating system, at least within Windows 10. And then according to that, just open the scaled version. And then if you want to, after this worked, you can just take the scaled version, right click, drag, and drag it to your desktop. And it'll have an option for copy here, move here, create shortcuts here. And you can just create a shortcut, and then you'll be able to open it from your desktop every time. If none of these created the solution you needed for FL Studio, I actually have a web page I'll link below directly from ImageLine that has tons of plugins with resolutions for the issues for those plugins. So in summary, you can change the resolution of your computer altogether, which will change the sizes in FL Studio. You can bridge or detach your plugin, opening it as a standalone program to keep the sizing outside of FL Studio. You can use the GUI settings by going to Options and General Settings. And in the top left, you can scale the interface of FL Studio. You can use Native Scaling or Scale the Editor to try and fix scaling issues within the plugin or the plugin wrapper itself. And if all else fails, then FL Studio actually has an executable file specifically for you to help fix those sizing issues. Hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios. Mm -hmm.